Thank you. So uh, we are dealing here with secret sharing schemes for general access structures or for any access structure, any family of qualified sets, not necessarily threshold ones. Uh, of course, in a secret sharing scheme, when we have some qualified sets that can recover the secret from the shares, and then qualified sets have no information at all. Mm. This family of qualified sets is called the access structure, and the problem we have here is we want to construct a secret sharing scheme for every, uh, for every given access structure. Well, this is possible. Uh, it was proved uh, by Ito, Saito, and Nishiseki that uh, there exists a linear secret sharing scheme for every given access structure. Not only a secret sharing scheme, but also a linear one, one that has nice homomorphic properties. Uh, but the problem with this general construction is that the length of the shares grows exponentially with the number of participants. So these schemes are very, very inefficient. And actually, if we think about uh, access structures that are connected to MP complete problems, like the Hamiltonian graph problem, uh, it's easy to argue that efficient general construct, efficient secretion schemes for every access structures cannot exist. Uh, but maybe it's not, these schemes are inefficient because of the length of the shares. Here we have efficiency, efficiency, maybe we can get efficient, inefficient schemes with short shares. But actually this is also believed to be impossible. So in all known general constructions, the length of the shares is actually exponential in the, in the number of participants. The number of bits of the share grows exponentially. And uh, this is uh, believed to be unavoidable, so we have this conjecture. Uh, there exists a family, an infinite family of access structures, such that um, the length of the shares uh, has to be exponential on the number of participants. Uh, this conjecture, if we re restrict to linear secret sharing schemes, so secret sharing schemes that are constructed from linear maps over finite fields, then by a counting argument, it can be proved that one needs uh, shares with exponential length. But we don't have any explicit family of access structures uh, for which we can prove that uh, this, this is needed, that uh, we need uh, length of exponential shares. But we have an explicit family of access structures for which we can prove that the length of the shares is super polynomial on the number of participants. So for linear schemes, we are, well, the conjecture is more or less proved. But for non-linear schemes, for, so for secret chain schemes that, uh, for general secret chain schemes, maybe not linear, then we know much less about this conjecture. Actually, the best known lower bound is quite far from exponential. So this is the, the best result we have for, for non-linear schemes. And we, there exist a family of access structures, an infinite family of access structures, such that the the length of the shares has to be of this order, n over, n over log n. Of course, n over log n is very far from exponential. Uh, this bound was obtained by using uh, basic properties of the Shannon entropy, the so-called Shannon information inequalities. More details about, about that will be given later, so this is a, a kind of an overview of our result. But in the same work, Chismas proof that this bound cannot be improved much by using these techniques, by using these Shannon information inequalities. So, well, we, are, we had this limitation result, but then uh, in, the li in the late 90s, uh, these non-Shannon information inequalities were found. So we have some other properties of uh, Shannon entropy that we have these uh, non-Shannon information inequalities, additional properties about the Shannon entropy, and these, the, the, the pedants of these uh, non-Shannon information inequalities, then uh, we, we had some hope that they, these new inequalities could help to find better lower bounds to improve our knowledge on the conjecture. Well, but uh, then in uh, 2009, Bimel and Orlov proved that this may not be the case. So they proved that if we take all information inequalities and at most five variables, so quite simple information inequalities, and all of the known information inequalities, then we cannot improve, uh, we cannot improve the lower bounds. So the, the lower bounds that can be obtained by using these known information inequalities is at most uh, linear. 
And this is our result. Uh, we prove more, the more limitations, we prove further limitations on the use of noise channel inequalities. Here we, we prove that if the number of variables in the information inequalities is bounded, so if we use only information inequalities on a bounded number of variables, then the best lower bound we could get is polynomial on n. So we cannot expect to find super polynomial lower bounds if we use only information inequalities on a bounded number of variables. But here, the, you know, our, gen our result is weaker maybe than the Baymal and Norval because uh, we deal with, or we prove the, the our impossibility result we deals with polynomial lower bounds instead of linear. But here, our result works for all information inequalities, the, no, the known ones or the unknown ones. So uh, even if new information inequalities are found, uh, we prove that they, they, they are not going to help us to find better lower bounds if we only use uh, uh, inf information inequalities on a bounded number of variables. So of course, these results, this is our main result. Uh, more I'm going to give more details now. But of course, these limitation results obviously suggest that if we want to prove the conjecture, or if we want to be closer to a proof of the conjecture, we need, indeed, new techniques. Uh, uh, the, the techniques must be completely different and new. Okay, let's give now more details about our result. So the problem is that uh, why, do, why don't we find uh, nice lower bounds? Well, because we, we don't have many, many techniques. Actually, you only have one technique to find lower bounds on the length of the shares for non-linear non schemes. So, and the technique is as follows. So we take this model for a secret sharing scheme. We model a secret sharing scheme as a collection of random variables. And we consider the Shannon entropies, the joint, the joint uh, Shannon entropies of these random variables. So for every set of participants, which is a special participant that knows the secret, for every set of participants, we consider this, uh, the Shannon entropy of the, of the random variables. And then this, gi this gives us a function here yeah, from the um, okay. uh, function from every set. From every set of participants, we have this age of x, which is the, sorry, this should be s of x, x s sub x, so the, the entropy of, of these uh, the, the shares compared to the, to the entropy of the secret. And then the idea to find lower bounds is to use the properties of this vector h to find lower bounds on the length of the share. And actually, what do we know about this vector h? This vector h uh, is a vector that has uh, 2 to the n plus 1 uh, entries. So we have one entry for every subset. And then uh, it has to satisfy, well, we have these basic properties. Uh, the, the definition of secret sharing scheme implies these two constraints. If, a is, if a set A is qualified, then the vector H must satisfy this. If, the, if it's unqualified, uh, we have another constraint. And in addition to that, this vector H has been defined uh, from Shannon, uh, 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 Shannon entropy. So it must satisfy information inequalities. And the information inequalities are the, are the constraints that are given by the fact that this vector is defined from Shannon entropies. So we have a linear program. All these constraints are linear constraints. We maximize some function, given some constraints, we have a linear program. And then the idea is, well, what can we say about H? Uh, by, since we know that the H must satisfy these constraints. So if we, if we, for a given access structure, if we were able, if we have such a linear program and we are able to find the minimum value of, for this linear program, then this minimum value is a lower bound on the information ratio, on the ratio between the maximum length of the shares and the length of the secret. So this is the only technique we, we have at hand now. Uh, and this was the technique that uh, Chismas used to find uh, his lower bound. So he proved that there exists for every end, there exists an access structure, so then the, the, um, the length of the shares must be n over log n. And actually, what uh, the proof is based on then, every, for these access structures, every, uh, the minimum of this linear program is, uh, is n over log n, a multiple of n over log n. So, and then the, he considered the linear program, but 
the only information inequalities he used are the, sh the basic ones, the Shannon information inequalities, which is are these ones. Uh, which are actually the only thing that is used here, the only constraint we use on this uh, vector H is that the mutual, the conditional mutual information is non negative. Then by using these, these constraints on the vector H, one is able to prove this lower bound N over log N. But yeah, and this, in this, um, the Shannon information inequalities, it can be summarized saying that this vector H defines a polymatrix. It's a combinatorial object. It is defined by this uh, vector H defines a polymatrix. So this is, if you use this linear program, we can get this lower bound N over log N. And actually, Chismers proved that not the best lower bound we can obtain by using only Shannon information inequalities is linear. How is this proved then? Well, the proof for this limitation result is to present, we present a solution to this linear program that uh, says that the minimum value is n. And the solution is this one. We take this polymatroid defined here, the, the, this function C, uh, satisfying these uh, properties here, is a solution to the linear program for every axis structure. And in this solution, the, the length of one share is, is equal to n. Well, the, the value that corresponds to the length of one share is, is n. So, because since there exists this feasible solution to the linear program, we, the best lower bound we can get is, is linear or n. Then, well, uh, uh, we, we need to find better lower bounds. So the, the, the idea is, well, uh, we have to add more constraints to the linear program. We have more information on the vector H because we have this non-channel information inequalities. Then we add this non-channel information inequalities to the linear program, and better, we might expect that we find better lower bounds. And indeed, this is the case for particular access structures. For some particular access structures, if we add these uh, non-channel information inequalities, we get uh, better lower bounds on the, on the length of the shares. But uh, we want to prove this asymptotic result. So we want to find asymptotic lower bounds. And in this case, we, we haven't had any success. So the, the best lower bound is still n over log n. The best asymptotic lower bound is still n over log n. And the problem is, well, we know that there exist non-channel information inequalities, but we don't know many of them, only a few. And actually, only on four variables, there are infinitely many, so that, that this, these non-channel information inequalities are extremely complex, and we don't know much about it. Uh, so the idea, what, is, uh, this non what are these non-channel information inequalities? Here we have uh, that not all polymatroids, not all polymatroids are defined from Shannon entropies. So we have only some special polymatroids called entropic can be defined from the Shannon entropy of some random variables. And we have also inside the, the entropic polymatroids, we have the linear ones that are even more specific, are the ones that are defined from linear random variables, for instance. Then if we, if we for instance, if we care only about linear secret sharing schemes, then we have this uh, linear polymatrix. And, uh, well, the main problem is that uh, we don't have any characterization of these entropic polymatrix or of these linear polymatrix. We don't know much about, about them. Uh, but we know a few information inequalities that are constraints, linear inequalities that are satisfied by any entropic vector, by any vector that is defined from, an ent from the entropy of some random variables then there exist some uh, inequalities have been presented that must be satisfied by any entropic uh, polymatroid. And then also there exist other inequalities that are called rank inequalities that are the ones that must be satisfied for, for every linear polymatroid, so for every family of linear random variables. So this, the, here we have two examples. The first information inequalities that cannot be derived from the basic ones was presented by Chang and Young, and this is the one. This is the, here we have, a, we have four. This is a, an information inequality on four variables. So given four random variables, the entropy of these four random variables has to satisfy this constraint. Uh, for the rank inequalities, they, they were known before. Ingleton, in 1971, presented this, this constraint. So here, if we have four, vec four vector subspaces of a vector space, the dimension, for instance, here would be the dimension of the sum, and so on, then the, the, this constraint must be 
satisfied. So every linear polymatroid must satisfy this constraint. And then until the late 90s, many, many other information inequalities have been found, but not enough. So here is the, uh, to summarize this, this situation of the rank inequalities. Here we have all polymatroids. Some of the polymatroids are entropic and some are linear. And then uh, we have the sharing inequalities that define polymatroids, the information inequalities that uh, apply to entropic polymatroids, and the rank inequalities that apply to linear polymatroids. But as, as I said, we don't know much about this, these families of poly, polymatroids. So yeah, and this is a problem. So we have this negative result. The, the known information inequalities don't help much. The ones we know at, uh, at this moment uh, only provide lower bounds that are linear on N. And uh, the, the proof is the same. We take this, uh, uh, we prove that uh, even by adding these inequalities to the linear program, we always can find a feasible solution such that the value is n. Okay. Uh, this proof is uh, by Bimel and Orloff. It's quite uh, complex, and they use a computer, a computer program to check this fact. Uh, and then we found, uh, well, we generalize the result by proving that all the best lower bound that can, you can obtain by using all known or unknown rank inequalities, but if, if, it is, if this result, since this result is applied uh, to rank inequalities, of every information inequality is also rank inequality, that then here this theorem applies also to information inequalities, then the best um, lower bound is polynomial on n. But the thing is, uh, here we, the, 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 the limitation we have is the, on, by using information inequalities on a bounded number of variables. Maybe by using an unbounded number of variables, we could get better lower bounds. And uh, the, result, the, the proof is the same. We present a solution to the linear program, a feasible solution to the linear program, such that the minimum uh, is, is this one, yeah, this combinatorial number here. Uh, this is a, in a, well, we, our result is more general. And uh, the proof is much simpler. It's quite, uh, we present a very simple family of polymatroids that satisfy the linear program and, uh, and satisfy also all rank inequalities. Well, satisfy all, all rank inequalities, so satisfy the linear program. Uh, these, these polymatroids are very simple. They are uniform and Boolean. More details on the paper. So this is uh, to conclude. Uh, what else can we do if we want to know more about what happens when we take an unbounded number of variables, then we have some other results on an ongoing work about uh, limitation results based on the techniques that are used to find these inequalities. But of course, if we want to find better all our bounds, we need more information about these entropic vectors and also new techniques. For instance, the, the techniques that are used to find lower bounds for linear secret sharing schemes are completely different. Maybe we could adapt them to the general case. Thank you.